All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to the first Happy Chat for this autumn. So today we have uh, the pleasure to have two guests from our dear partners from Graz, Austria, from uh, Solvion. We have uh, Tommy and Stefan uh, with us today. So today we are talking about a very, very interesting topic, uh, the role of AI in the modern enterprise. Uh, Tommy and Stefan, you have been talking about this topic now uh, in many, many conferences during this year. Uh, so in that case, I think we can say that the interest in that whole topic is, is raising by the, by the month, we, we could say. Is, is that correct? Yeah, definitely. So the, the interesting thing is that, okay, how can we incorporate uh, artificial intelligence or machine learning into our collaboration, into our daily work and make our life as end users and as power users uh, more efficient and more easy to actually be able to uh, focus more on the, on the um, interesting or more on the important and creative things uh, than rather doing repetitive tasks. But um, that was a short intro to what we are going to talk about. Now I would like to give the word to our dear guests. So please, the floor is yours. Thank you, Sid. Um, yeah, let's start by introducing ourselves a bit. Uh, my name is Stefan. Uh, as you said, I'm from Graz, Austria. I'm working at Solvion as a technical lead. Uh, I'm more on the cloud side of things. Um, I have a strong background in infrastructure, everything related to Azure and Office 365 infrastructure. It's my, my playground. Uh, I, I'm also an AI MVP since a couple of months as I'm doing a lot of uh, bot stuff, cognitive services stuff, and so on. And yeah, we run a few uh, local meetups. We run, Tommy and myself are all co-organizers of the SharePoint Saturday in Vienna. Um, so... We're doing quite a, a lot of stuff in that community area as well. Cool. Great to have you here. Hi. Yeah, my name is Tommy. Uh, I'm basically uh, the team lead here for everything about SharePoint development and infrastructure. Uh, myself, I have a background now for yeah, close to 10 years working with SharePoint as a developer, as a consultant, and now as a yeah, architect and, and team lead role. And together with Stefan and others, we are working with, or we have the pleasure to work with the community to provide SharePoint Center Vienna and some local meetups, but that's everything Stefan already said. So, let's dive into the topic. Um, I'll start by explaining you a bit about the evolution of computers and IT before we go deeply into AI, because that's a, a, an important topic in order to understand where we were coming from and where it's going. Uh, as you might know there were these desktop PCs uh, in the 1980s where you had your PC standing on your desk or was located under your desk and you could do some, some stuff with it but it wasn't uh, that uh, developed as it is now so you had most probably no internet connection you could not uh, yeah. communicate or collaborate with others so you could only do stuff on your PC locally uh, without uh, the rest of the world um, in the 90s, there was this invention called uh, the Internet, where you basically could connect with other servers and services and computers. Uh, you could uh, visit websites, you could search for various things in the Internet, and it was quite a bit of an evolving step uh, compared to, to the classic desktop PC. In the 2000s, you had the, the mobile area uh, where everything was social, and all users could uh, download apps from the app stores and you could connect to other users via the social platforms like Twitter, like Facebook, uh, and whatever. Um, you could collaborate and communicate with others via your mobile devices or via your laptop and PCs. So this was basically the starting point where everything towards uh, collaboration in the enterprise uh, started as well. Uh, but what is actually the future uh, holding for us? Um, from my perspective or from, from our perspective, it's about conversations. So it's about um, the natural language between people and the technology, the services and, and service or whatever. 
um, and it's about Boston digital agents. So, so you're, you're saying that basically um, we humans start to interact with computers as humans interact between each other. Yeah. So it's right. not about finding information, putting information somewhere. It's more about conversations and yeah. computers will have the ability and the means of actually respond in a meaningful way. So that is not only about search, uh, it's more about conversations and actually making something out of the conversation. Is that yeah. what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. It's not yeah. about clicking here, clicking there, doing this and that. Uh, it's about really talking or, or texting with a, with a service, actually, uh, like you would do it with your co-employees. Uh, so that's the, the thing where it's going to right now. Uh, and if you look at the modern workplace, um, there you have the, the point where you need to introduce digital assistance in order to adopt to the conversation area right now. Uh, so we're talking about bots, mm -hmm. uh, which empower your employees to achieve more. Um, because bots can easily uh, take over the daily routine uh, in order to have your employees being able to do more innovative stuff rather than doing uh, daily routines all the time. So actually, daily routines can be done by bots or digital assistants or, or any other service, and your employees will have the time uh, and the, well, let's say, um, more fun stuff to do and innovative stuff, and this will bring your enterprise uh, more more forward. Okay, so you're saying in the, in that way that you could use digital assistance to uh, em em empower or to enable um, employee support and performance support during the work that they are doing. By meaning, they can ask questions, or the bots can actually deliver them the right content or information they would need right at the time where they actually need it. So this yeah. is what you are saying. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So what do you think right now? Are we already there uh, in, in that stage or are we right now building that type of environment? We're building that type of environment. We're like in a transition phase right yeah. now. Yeah. That's, That's what I see as well. A lot of a lot of companies, they still do it in, in the very, like, say, classical way that you have uh, – training material somewhere or you have your information spread out all over the intranet or you have them somewhere in silos and users have really, really big issues to, to find this information. So, yeah. so in that way, we can use the bot and the cognitive services to actually connect the dots, uh, find information, use search to surface information, but then actually use the cognitive services to actually uh, create context, the right context, and actually through the bot framework or through a digital assistant in what type of way it will be, can actually yeah. bring it to the user in a personalized way. Yeah, that's yeah. about it. Cool. And, and the point why we're like in the transition phase right now and why we aren't there yet is simply if you look at what Microsoft offers in the AI uh, area, there's a lot of services out there. Uh, mostly uh, deployed in within Microsoft Azure you could use. Uh, and many of those services are not that old. So if you mm -hmm. think about uh, the Azure bot services or some of the cognitive services, they're like um, one year old, but not older. Yeah. So uh, therefore, it was a bit of a, a, bit of a challenge for, for enterprises or for companies to adopt to those services as they're like, uh, rather slowly in adopting to new services and to, and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why we are right now in the transition phase. Uh, but if you look at these, this slide uh, here, it's not only about bots and it's not only about cognitive services. When you speak about AI, it's uh, about really more. Um, I mean, you could utilize some machine learning services in order to get the meaning out of data, which has yeah. nothing to do with, with bots in, in the first in the first place. Uh, of course, you could uh, connect those services as well. Okay. Uh, Stefan, Stefan, now a, a little bit of a tricky question. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. Um, the term AI, yeah. it's, it's really, I mean, it's a really powerful term, right? It's artificial intelligence. Yeah. Um, don't, don't you think it's more rather, let's say, a marketing term right now? Because 
me personally, I still doubt that it's really artificial intelligence in, in the background, uh, being intelligent like a human being. Uh, isn't it more that it's more like deep learning, machine learning, or more like pattern recognition, uh, made more accessible to, to the food folk like we are? Or, or how would you respond to that question? Yeah, definitely like a, a buzzword nowadays, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, uh, it's used everywhere right now. Um, but the point is, and all the, the big vendors like Microsoft, Amazon, Google, whatever, they have, as you said, uh, they found a way in order to bring really uh, decent technology and, and services which uh, require a, a lot of effort to implement or a lot of know-how uh, in the back-end side. They, they found a way in order to deploy or to spread the word and get all the users uh, used to it and using it. Uh, if you think about how easy it is to, to set up a bot in Azure, it's like a one hour task and you're done. Um, yeah. I think some, some years, uh, back, which was a really hard task and you, you, you need to have like, uh, some developers who understood their, mm -hmm. uh, their tasks and their abilities. Um, so it was a bit of a challenge back then compared mm -hmm. to now. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, you, you know, our session from Marcel and myself, uh, in, in the SharePoint Saturdays, there we say it also nowadays, it's just so much easier to, to make, let's say, business apps more smarter. But me personally, I wouldn't use the term AI because AI is, 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 is a really, really powerful thing. Yeah. Um, but nevertheless, I mean, the, the the path is to going towards that direction. At some point, the, the software and the algorithms will become so sophisticated that they can get close to human intelligence. Maybe even at some point, we will experience singularity, as you say, when the artificial intelligence gets more uh, intelligent than humans. Let's see if we will still... Uh, be alive then, let's see. <laughs> but uh, this is... Definitely where we are heading right, right now and, 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 and using those, those tools is a very, very smart and easy way to actually, uh, create services and applications for, which help the end user tremendously to save time and then money in the end. Yeah. The big challenge right now is uh, not to use those services, but to use it, use them in a, in a productive way. So it's, the, it's use case driven. You cannot deploy bots for everything. To yeah, that's use case and the business yeah. problem behind it. Yeah, that's the that's the hardest part to to figure out. I mean, yeah. you said it in your session. I said, okay, we need a bot. Uh, we need blockchain and we need cognitive services. So let's let's do something with it. <laughs> I yeah. mean, it doesn't make sense. So you really need to think. Okay, where can I create value uh, the most? out of this and, and how can I use it to create value for the business or for the user, which then creates value for the, for the business. And that yeah. is the main, main goal, what you need to achieve. That's it. Cool. So, um, if we talk about AI or, 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 um, these things in the modern workplace, we definitely need to talk about bots and cognitive services. Um, so, what is actually a bot? Um, this is a definition from the Cambridge Dictionary, um, where it says uh, a bot is nothing more than a computer program designed to have a conversation with a human being, and that especially over the internet, of course. Mm -hmm. um, so it's nothing more than a computer program or service you need to develop. Um, it's place, but you need to make the service intelligent. Uh, and therefore you need to make use of some, some services like the cognitive services we'll talk later on in order to have like your bot being able to understand uh, written language, understand images, for example, or understand speech. Mm -hmm. So that's about it. Uh, and Microsoft offers the Microsoft bot framework in order to, to build and deploy bots, um, where you have some, some key areas like uh, the channel area, uh, which is basically the, the front end to users. So um, what you see here is 
a, a snippet of the uh, channels you can uh, pick up right now. Uh, you can pick like uh, the Microsoft channels, like Teams, Type, um, Office 365, Cortana, whatever. Um, but you can also utilize Slack, Facebook Messenger, um, or you can um, integrate your bot in any other platform via uh, direct line where you basically um, just exchange uh, the message data with your platform then. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, uh, you need to have uh, uh, some some kind of service which actually makes your bot intelligent. And these are the, the in the Microsoft uh, speaking, the cognitive services. Uh, we have a, a couple of categories for text, speech, knowledge, search, whatever. Um, and inside of, inside uh, each of these categories, you have various services you can you can connect your bot to. Um, and for the backend side, uh, there is uh, us usually the hosting platform is Microsoft Azure, but you can host your bot wherever you want to. Uh, for building bots, you can right now use uh, .NET or Node.js when we talk about the Bot Builder SDK version 3, which is the channel platform is Microsoft Azure, but you can host your bot wherever you want to. Uh, for building bots, you can right now use uh, .NET or Node.js when we talk about the Bot Builder SDK version 3, which is the general available version right now. They're working on the version 4, which will be released soon, where you're going to have the ability to not only use .NET or Node.js, but you can use Java and Python as well. So it's like basically a very open um, area here where where Microsoft tries to get uh, more and more developers into into this kind of development uh, stack. Okay. Um, yeah, that, that, that's about the Microsoft Bot Framework. Um, if you think about developing with the bot framework, you always have to think about how to design your conversations because that's mm -hmm. the, the key thing your users will, will be confronted with. Um, so for the conversations, a good bot is not only a, a text, texty bot. So, uh, your, your bot should understand or should be able to uh, interact with the users in a more natural way. Um, as you can see here, uh, a bot can also talk with your or, or text with your users using uh, rich attachments like cards, like images, videos, whatever. Um, so it makes the conversation more interactive and more human-like than when mm -hmm. only exchanging text uh, to text. So, um, Stefan, just a quick question uh, before we move on to the examples. Um, do you really need to be a developer to create bots and uh, use cognitive services, or is also, let's say, an, a non-developer, but let's say a power user like like me, able to do this? Uh, it, it depends uh, heavily on the use case. Um, for yep. let let's say, um, if you have like a simple use case where you want to have your Q and A uh, mm -hmm. list connected to a bot, then you could. Uh, easily do it without any heavy developer skills. If you think about connect your bot to a, I don't know, local database or whatever, of course yeah. you need some, some developer development skills in order to, um, build your bot the right way. Uh, you, you were talking about Q&A. Uh, there is a service out there. I think it's called Q&A maker.ai. Is it that one? Yeah. It's that yeah. one. So the Q&A maker.ai you can use as a non-developer to create a Q&A uh, bot experience for, yeah. for, for basically anything, right? Yeah. It's basically one of the, the cognitive services you can utilize and it offers you the ability to have like build a knowledge base in a, in an online portal or you can even use, um, a knowledge base base which is deployed or, or um, which is hosted on your public facing website. Um, then QA Maker uh, just sets up the knowledge base and you can then uh, from your bot ask the QA Maker API mm -hmm. if you have a question and the QA Maker API will deliver the results. Then. Cool. And that's totally free, right? Or do you, does he need to pay something for that? Uh, there's a there's a, a free price 
pricing plan with some limitations concerning okay. the size of the knowledge base, but there's mm -hmm. also a paid version as well. Right. Of course. And um, as we talk about cognitive services, uh, we've, we've uh, talked about the Q&A maker for, for bots. It makes sense to use the language understanding uh, cognitive services, which was uh, initially called LUIS. Um, for really understanding the user's intent mm -hmm. uh, and have like a, a dialogue-based conversation then. Uh, but you can also uh, combine any of those cognitive services depending on your use case. So you could basically have uh, language understanding and translator text combined um, where you basically can then understand the intent and translate the, yes. the, in, the input uh, in order to trigger something in the backend side as well in yeah. your favorite language. So just to explain quickly to the audience, Louis is just not a random name. It means language understanding intelligence services, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. They changed the name uh, recently to just language understanding. So but the, the abbreviation uh, is still the same, yeah. So Louis become became Lou in that case. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> <Okay>. Louis became <laughs> Lou. Cool. Thanks, Stefan. So um, let's move on to some some examples on on the AI side in the modern workplace. Cool, looking which forward. Which will Tommy uh, talk about in the next couple of minutes. Okay, um, we start with an yeah uh, probably uh, somebody already heard about this uh, Microsoft presentation translator. Um, I think they they used it at Build Conference last year uh, where they started the service. And someone starts it with a click in your PowerPoint. You have a, an, a written extension where you say, okay, uh, start presentation translator. And then there's a service behind, uh, with mobile apps for Android and iOS. I'm not sure about the, the Windows mobile platform anymore. Um, but, uh, with this service, basically what you're doing is that the speaker talks to his phone and the, the machine learning in the background, uh, translates, uh, the speech to whatever language you selected on your device uh, as an output language. Um, I saw it at the build conference via stream, but I saw it live last year when Michael Knoll uh, actually uh, pulled this off at, at One Chef on Saturday. And mm -hmm. I used it myself last year at Chef on Saturday in, in Barcelona. And afterwards I, I, I asked the audience, uh, what, what, the Spanish are good, was it, was it understandable? Uh, given the fact that my English maybe isn't the yellow of the egg, as we say in German. Uh, <laughs> It's not maybe the best, but it's the answer was like, it's, it's like TechNet English. So, mm. uh, it, it's the same Bing Translator service, uh, behind. So you can get the meaning. It's like okay-ish good, uh, but not word by word. So nothing you can use for, uh, I don't know, setting up a contract, for example, but yeah. to, to getting, getting across your point, uh, during a speech, I think it's a, a, a really, really good, um, service yeah. and, Michael Noll, we all know him as the, the world traveler, one of the world travelers in the Shepherd community. He mm -hmm. also uses the, the translator apps for going to China and making a phone of, of some uh, signs, for example, and getting back information. Uh, which yeah, I is, think across Europe, it's not the problem to understand the different languages from, yeah. from the terms, but when you have no clue about the, the language, then this service comes in yeah. really handy, I think. I think the first time I have seen it uh, in the last SPS Lisbon, uh, when Martina Grom was giving yeah. her presentation and she was using it and then people started to, okay, please switch it off because it's distracting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, That's but uh, you, you say it right. I mean, to get about the context, what it is it about? I think nowadays it's good enough, but, um, to really, really have a translation, real time translation service, it's maybe still not there. We, we use the translation service to translate documents from, let's say, English to another language. And this works pretty well. So when it's kind of not real time, but more, let's yeah. say, from yeah. text, then it works pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it can get more information, more context, and yeah. use best, yeah. better, better terms, of course. Okay, moving forward, we have the, on the next slide, uh, the Office 65 Intelligent Search. Uh, of course, Microsoft is also uh, using AI in the background to provide um, more meaningful results in terms of search. So, uh, discover people content and learn more about the people you work with. Um, to be totally honest, this is a, a point where I 
I, I don't see that kind of artificial intelligence behind. Uh, this is like uh, going through a graph and, and look who is yeah, next or, or right. close to you. And mm -hmm. when we're totally honest, I think this slide looks like with the same bullet points like 2010 or 2013. Uh, <laughs> personal search, uh, discover people, context around you. So it's mm -hmm. not, not nothing, nothing brand new. But of course, uh, more and more they use uh, services from Azure also in, in the background uh, to get more meanings out of your Office 365 data. Yeah. Okay, moving forward. Okay, uh, this is funny because now we have uh, we, we, we just to, to get the audience a clue. We I I said this slide needs to be updated like a couple of minutes before we started the web podcast, but now we had the wrong image taken uh, because um, the SharePoint mobile app also. Uh, was announced like last week from from Mark Cashman, and this is actually mm -hmm. the old picture of the of the Find Me tab. Now in the new version, this Find Me tab is uh, not three three screens, but one screen. And also, uh, the blog post talks about how to use uh, AI in the background to make your uh, search experience also on the mobile phone more meaningful, more powerful on the go, uh, mm -hmm. on the iPad, on the iPhone, and on on Android. So check out the, Mark, uh, the blog post from Mark Cashman with all the details there. Um, also on the next slide, uh, we see something with, with um, on the mobile where you take a picture of a bill, for example, and extract information. Uh, we all know the, the OneNote or the Office Lens uh, applications yeah. from a couple of years ago where they decrop the image, uh, they, they change the, the, the color space a little bit uh, to get the best out of the, of the image um, for you as a user. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, whiteboards, uh, bills, documents. You can you can use your phone like like a scanner and go through. It's like uh, you remember it the, the James Bond movies from the nineties where they have these small devices that they use to make uh, photographs of, of documents. Uh, yeah, yeah. For me, it feels like using it now on, on your phone, um, just to to make sure you you don't uh, lose the information that is stored on on some paper. And yeah, yeah, yeah. We arrived in the James Bond area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm still waiting for my car, but. <laughs> yeah, it's getting there. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And the next example is like like Cortana. This is actually uh yeah, it, it hit us this weekend at Chef and Saturday in in uh Stockholm where during our preparation and and when you in the prepare your session of course you start presenting it and you stop and present again and stop and present again. And PowerPoint for sure has no clue when you now finally uh do your talk. But after the first time I started presenting, uh, a short message uh, popped up in, in, in PowerPoint that, hey, you have an appointment for Chef on Saturday Stockholm. It seems like you're presenting somewhere. Want to, want you, do you want to share your slides with all the people in this appointment? Oh, cool. So and Steph and I were like, what, what is this now? Uh, but then we realized, okay, there is an appointment we, we made for ourselves. And mm -hmm. when I click on share, I would have shared it with Chef and myself, so not the big crowd. But uh, I think it's a good feature for... Or if you're, if you're presenting or if you're, if you're giving workshops, for example, to remind you that afterwards you should send out the handout and then you have everyone in the, in the point already there. And of course, yeah. there are a lot of other features that uh, Cortana is, is capable of. Like when you, uh, I think for this web chat uh, or for this happy chat, we, we, we had some conversations in, in emails. Uh, and at some point in time, I, I said something like, I, I will get back to you and this and then. And. Cortana is connected to on my services, so it, it put up a reminder and said, hey, you said to you, see, you call him or you, you, you text him and this and this day. This is pretty useful. Mm -hmm. And uh, like Stefan showed us a couple of slides before, you can also use Cortana as one of the channels in, in your bots, so you have it integrated in your, your Windows uh, environment. Okay, yeah. and the, the last demo is something inside of one of our, of our portals uh, where we use a, a small bot. Um, it's called Sally because uh, Sally works at the sales department uh, on our end. Uh, and the idea is that behind Sally is here on the, on the bottom right here. Uh, it's basically an, an FAQ uh, where we have uh, questions and answers stored in German. So a simple Q&A maker uh, connected to a SharePoint list. SharePoint list has mm -hmm. two columns. One is the question, one is the answer. Some uh, Azure function magic behind the scenes yeah. uh, connects the the document library or the SharePoint list with the QA maker. So whenever somebody updates it, it is connected. And then uh, the translation service kicks in because you can ask her in German and she will answer in German, but you also can ask her in, I don't know, what if you like English yeah. it is. 
uh, you can ask her in English and you will get back the answer in English. And what happens behind the scenes is that the translation services that detects the, Eng uh, the, the sentence in English or the question in English uh, translates it to German uh, and then okay, gets cool. back the answer in German, uh, translate yeah. the answer back and hopefully it should show now uh, uh, in the bot uh, the answer. Okay. Then yeah, I've got with us today. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but just to explain the audience, there's quite a lot of happening right now in this picture. So we have uh, Valo Internet as the internet solution. Uh, everyone should check this out. Pretty cool what those guys are doing. We have here a bot where we can com communicate um, and ask about FAQs. Plus we have an in-text in -text, um, learning solution which shows us uh, useful information about what you can do in the internet. Yeah. So oh, yeah, now the answer came. Yeah, uh, now the answer came. The, the combination of all all the services in, in one screen, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and now we try them in Spanish and to see uh, she answers now uh, in yeah probably and I'm I'm not a Spanish speaker but probably in in this in the simple uh, Spanish like like technical translations are done. Um, but uh, for us, it's uh, a good good example uh, to show that with with the help of bots and the combination of of a tool like Habit, you can drive user adoption, I think, to a next level, uh, and without the need of of long documentations or or uh, a lot of of face to face end user trainings. They are good and relevant, but uh, on the go and with the recent updates and everything is is more more agile now. I think those those tools in combination can really really drive the use adoption. Yeah, thanks. I think with that statement we can close this happy chat. Um, I would like to thank you, Stefan and Tommy, uh, a million times uh, that you had time to do this happy chat. It was like always a pleasure uh, to talk with you guys. Uh, let's stay tuned for more updates. Okay. Bye, See you soon, guys. Bye.